The first story is not a, on a happy note, unfortunately. Anthony Bourdain has passed away. He had a show on CNN, I believe, where he traveled the world and, you know, talked to different people and really enlightened a lot of people, inspired a lot of people and gave people culture that they wouldn't have normally got. He's dead at 61 and he was hanged in France. The news so far, they said that he has committed suicide. And the first thing I do want to say is if anybody you know, feel sad or upset, just know everything always gets better. I mean, we all get upset, we all get depressed sometimes, but it almost always blows over and, you know, life gets better and things change, so nothing's ever really worth doing that. So I do want to say, you know, I have love for everybody and that's why I try to be as kind as I can because everybody is fighting a battle that you have no idea about. You know, there's Kate Spade earlier this week, she's a multi-millionaire fashion designer, and then you have Anthony Bourdain, one of the most love people in the world and I do want to talk about a few interesting things about his uh, apparent suicide that you know the news is starting to cover. He had a, a girlfriend named Asia Argento who um, recently was at the Cannes Music Festival and she had a big uh, outspoken speech against Harvey Weinstein and a lot of actresses and people in the entertainment industry are talking out about Harvey Weinstein it's the trendy thing to do now but hers was especially aggressive and in Asia Argento's speech she said Harvey Weinstein raped me, um, you know, at this music festival. And, and she said, this Cannes Music Festival was a stomping ground for Harvey Weinstein and for rapists. You can watch her video, so, you know, I don't misquote her. You can find the exact thing. But she basically said, we know who you, we know who Harvey Weinstein was, but we also know who you are. And she, like, pointed to the crowd. She's like, we know which of you are doing the same type of stuff. It's just very interesting that that just happened. And three days ago, it was in mainstream publications that um, Anthony Bourdain, uh, I guess, I don't know if it was a girlfriend or his wife, but she was spotted in Rome with the writer who basically covered the Harvey Weinstein story, and they were hugging and, you know, seemed very affectionate. So, like I said, I'm not trying to speculate or I, I don't know what's going on, but I do know that um, Anthony Bourdain was very outspoken against Hillary Clinton for supporting Harvey Weinstein for so long, and he, he called her out a bunch in 2017, and his girlfriend was calling out the entertainment industry, and I'm not saying that has anything to do with it, I just think, you know, that's a big burden, especially being at CNN. If you call out Hillary Clinton at CNN, that's, uh, you know, very counterculture and very heavy. I'm not saying it had anything to do with it. Maybe, you know, his girlfriend, like, being with the reporter, maybe that had something to do with psychologically. Maybe it had nothing to do with it. Like I said, I'm not claiming to know anything. I'm just saying I think that's very interesting that those things fell into line along with this. And I, I do want to say on that same note, 22 veterans commit suicide every day, uh, and the media doesn't talk about it. We have a we have a mental health crisis in the United States right now in multiple ways, and we have a suicide crisis. And one of the things as well, I've been doing some research that men overwhelmingly commit more suicide than women and I do want to say I you know I don't know what happened in this in this um, Anthony Bourdain case I'm not claiming to <clears throat> but what I can tell you is that the mainstream media and social media is destroying the mental health uh, of the United States and, and as, uh, uh, many parts of the world the media and social media is destroying and, and tearing people apart first of all technology is already doing that even without them helping and, and making the problem worse. We're living in a world where, you know, you go back 30, 20 years ago when I was young at school, all we had were pay phones. We didn't have cell phones. So we went in a short amount of time from being able to call people from one spot to being able to surf the web and talk to anybody from any place at any time and have supercomputers in our hands. So, you know, technology naturally is kind of messing with the mental health uh, of the United States. And the fact that all of these news sources are, are so negative, and I'm not even talking about politics, I'm just talking about energy and communication wise, they're so negative, they're so nasty all of the time, and everybody's so divided and so hateful towards themselves. If you love the country and you love the president, people demonize you and literally think you're like a neo-Nazi, like, which is one of the worst people in modern history. So there's, there's a huge disconnect there. And I do wanna say as well, uh, once again, I, I don't want to make light of this or, or speculate anything, but I, I remember an interview with Anthony Bourdain when they said that President Trump was meeting with uh, Kim Jong-un, and they said, if you were there, what food would you serve him? And Anthony Bourdain said, I, I can't remember exactly what he said, but hemlock, I think? He like basically was like, I would kill them both. I'd serve them poison. 
it doesn't matter if you hate or like President Trump or you like or hate anybody, to walk around with that much hate for, for anybody, whether it be the president, whether it be half of America, it's a heavy burden to bear. I don't care if it's liberal or conservatives and, you know, we all have our differences and we all have our opinions and stuff, but this way of uh, that we're going about it and the news goes about it, and especially, I, I do want to say as well, I mean, most mainstream news, like, I, I don't want to point out people, but Twitter, Facebook, a lot of liberal news sites, they hate men. They're they're constantly attacking men, and, and in their you know in their mind frame, it's like women are innocent victims. No matter what they do, nothing's wrong. And I'm not saying that women don't need help or anything, but their their narrative is like we hate men. Don't be a man. If you're a strong man, we hate you. You know, it's all your fault. You're a rapist, even if you've never raped anybody. You know, you're a terrible person. You're you're oppressing everybody. And the suicide rate for men is as high as four to one for women. So there's a huge crisis in the men male department with suicide so what type of psychological effect do you think it has cnn and nbc and vox and huffington post and you know all of these feminist bloggers when you're constantly attacking men you're not standing up for women when i go to the women's march you know i don't see a lot of proud unfortunately i wish i did i don't see a lot of proud women that say i'm a woman i'm happy i'm a woman i'm happy you're a man i don't care what your politics are it's like 95 percent. i'm a woman and i hate you I hate everybody who doesn't think the way Russia's hacking the election, and if you don't agree with me, you're a Nazi. Like, this is the energy that people are putting out. So when you have a crisis in the men, male department of suicide, maybe, just maybe, we should be a little bit kinder to each other. Maybe, just maybe, we should we should drop this narrative of, like, you know, if you love America, you're a terrible person, and if you're a man, you're a terrible person, because everybody's hurting. Everybody's struggling. It's not easy to be a man. It's not easy to be a woman. We should be a little bit kinder to each other. That's all I'm saying. I, I just hate the negativity. I hate this constant, like the way the news is 93% negative and all they do is hate, 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 hate. And then they fell, and then they sell psychotropic pills in the commercials where they say, hey, hate, 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 hate. Here, take this pill that alters your mind. Once again, I'm not saying this has anything to do with Anthony Bourdain. I have no idea. I know he had a past of depression. He had interviews uh, where he was depressed. He had interviews where he was saying he had a long life of drug use and he let a lot of people down. I don't know what happened. All I could speak on is, is the whole America and I know for a fact that the way the media portrays the news and the way they, they portray perspective is destroying the mental health of our, our country and it's just not a surprise to me, unfortunately, that suicide and mental health is on the rise. I'm not saying this. I don't have a political agenda or anything. I just really want to help people and stop just shoving pills in their face and shoving so much hate and negativity in our face. We, we're, we're creating a culture where we're telling people to hate themselves, hate the color of their skin, hate the color of other people's skin, you know, feel weak and terrible and, and, and you know what I'm saying, just horrible all the time. I just really just don't like it. And with 22 vets committing suicide a day and four to one men committing suicide and Anthony Bourdain dying and Kate Spade dying, Maybe we could have an honest, full-scale approach about mental health and really help our people because it's it's not an easy world to live in. And one thing above politics, I don't care if you're progressive or conservative or liberal, one way that we can make the world a lot better is by being nicer to each other at, at the workplace, at the coffee shop, just having communication and not hating each other. You know, it's like this type of stuff is the reason we have all this money in America, but we're not even the happiest country. So I, I think we could be a lot kinder to each other on that note. That's all I wanted to say, and, and once again, I'm not, I, I'm not suggesting anything. I have no idea what happened. I just know that it's, it's becoming a trend of people being very unhappy, and I, I don't want to see people die.